Right. Hey guys, um, today, now that my connection's a bit more stable, I'm very sorry if it's a bit laggy, but I'm using my mum's mobile data and it's like one bar of 4G. I'm sort of in the gym at the I thought I'd do it here. And um, so, yeah, so basically, as the title of the video suggested, we're going to be doing a top 10 animals created by science. Um, this is a topic I've been very intrigued about since I first heard. And so I wanted to do my own video, what they do and why they were created. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this, why I'm wearing this, you know, if you don't know, look it up. Um, Britain is sort of going through one of the biggest heat waves we've ever had. Um, so, yeah, that's that's why. But basically, today we're going to be doing a top 10 um, animals created by science. And, um, yeah, let's get into it. That's a big enough intro as it is. Let's go. Number 10. Number 10 is the sudden death mosquito. And you might have heard of, you might have heard of this one. I don't know, but you might have done. It's, it's one of the most um, commonly talked about animals created by science. You might, you might have heard about it. And um, basically what these mosquitoes is they mate with the females of the um, species. So they're all males, they mate with the females, um, which releases a lethal, uh, it releases lethal genes into the um, into the fur, or it kills the offspring, or makes them infertile. So that's what the sudden death mosquito does. Um, yeah, basically, it the scientists that created it, it claims to be able to control the spread of um, Diseases like the dengue, fever, and um, other ones that are spread by mosquitoes, which is obviously a very good thing, especially in hotter climates like um, Africa and places like that. So the sudden death mosquito um, is number 10 on the list because even though it is a mosquito and it is being used to um, try and kill or stop the spread of mosquitoes. It is a very good thing to keep us alive as it is. So, yeah, that's why they're at the top of the list. Nine, number nine is the glowfish. Sounds very nice because it is. It's a it's a nice. Um, Fish, no, no death here. No, um, no reasons. Well, there are reasons, but um, no, no killing or anything like that involved here. Just some fluorescent fish. So, um, basically, what they are is they are genetically modified zebra fish, which glow in the dark, obviously, and. Um, most of them are either red, orange, or green. Well, I probably will. I'll probably release an edited version of this video like next weekend or something like that because my Wi-Fi at the moment is not good enough, but maybe I will. But yeah, um, basically these um, glowfish started in 1999 and um, they basically worked on a fluorescent protein which was extracted from jellyfish, because as you know, jellyfish have a slight fluorescent glow to them in the dark. Um, and if you didn't know that, you know that now. And um, yeah, so basically they inserted the protein into the zebrafish embryo, which allowed it to integrate into the genome. So they then created the fluorescent fish, 
which are used to detect pollution by, you know, fluorescing brightly whenever there's pollution about. So these these will come in very um very well as you carry on into life and pollution and sea levels and stuff like that. So they're a great thing to have and yeah it's I think you can also get them as a pet as well, or they're trying to make sure they're trying to make it that you can get them as a pet. But yeah, it'll be fun if you can. So yeah, I'm actually gonna. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna move on now and go to number eight. Number eight. And number eight is probably a very famous one of Scottish descent, I believe. And that is Dolly the Sheep. Now, if you don't know who Dolly the Sheep is, she was the very first cloned mammal um, created from a single microscopic cell. So basically, that's one big living thing, a, a clone of that big, of that living thing being cloned. But yeah. She was created in 1996. 1996. And, um, she lived for seven years until she died of lung cancer, which is common in older sheep. And um, yeah, um, she was cloned in Scotland at the Roslyn Institute. And um, yeah. Basically, and she was amazing. Um, she was actually fertile as well. Um, she produced six lambs until her death, which is quite remarkable because cloning something would have come with, you know, health health defects and stuff like that. So infertility and you know less genes and stuff like that. But apparently not. She was fertile and she gave birth to four to six lambs. So it stands to reason why we haven't done it with, with again. We probably have just under wraps. But anyway, number four is the Vacanti Mounts, another very famous one. And um, yeah, this was also created back in 1995 by. Uh, Charles Vacanti in Massachusetts. Basically, there was a laboratory mouse who had a human ear grown to its back. Um, the ear was actually made of um, cow cartilage shells, and it, they put it into a bio biodegradable ear-shaped mold, so it was actually cow cartilage in the shape of a human ear. So it was created to show that the transplant transplantation of fabricated cartilage structures into human bodies is possible. So they created another ear, a uh, ear for somebody to use that had, you know that had lost an ear, or so which could go into you know other animals being used to make hands and arms and legs and, you know, stuff like that. However, there is a, you know, it came so low on the list because there is obviously the um, animal welfare um, problems of that, you know, growing human limbs off of animals, which is, there's a reason why they don't look like us because it wouldn't be good for them. So yeah, that's why the Vaganti mouse is so low down on the list. But anyway, number, what are we on now? Number eight, number seven. Number seven, frog. Now this magnificent creature was created because you know how people go on about dissecting frogs in science and stuff like that when they were 
older, they were younger, and um, especially you hear a lot of adults talking about it, and then we're like, hang on a minute, we've we've never done that, but um, but yeah, basically um, the see-through frog was created so that you didn't need to dissect it; you could see the organs and um, everything like that from the outside, so you didn't need to do in their job. So it's actually more beneficial to have a see-through frog than to dissect a dead one. So yeah. So basically, we can see how the organs grow, and um, it, it is also used to see how cancer spreads through the skin of the frog, which is quite interesting because you wouldn't exactly think of that, but they they use these to see how cancer spreads in a frog, which might end up helping us to understand how cancer spreads through our bodies and then, you know, finding a cure, maybe. But anyway, number six is what I haven't heard of before doing this research, and it's, and it's a beagle by the name of Ruppy. This is a cloned beagle from South Korea, um, called obviously called Ruppy, which means which actually means Ruby the puppy. Um, it's abbreviated, obviously. Um, it actually grow it actually glows under ultraviolet light, and um, yeah, she was cloned by using viral transfection of fibroblast cells for a protein forming a red fluorescent gene. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Number, that was number six. Number, what number was that? Was that number... That was number five? Number six. Number six, I think. Yeah. I don't know what number we're on. I'm just reading these out as I go along. Detecting plants. Now, these were created by a company called Aresa Biodetection from Copenhagen, actually, from Switzerland or Denmark? Denmark. Basically, these plants can actually detect landmines buried under the ground. So basically, whenever flowers from the plant hit nitrogen dioxide, which will reach the landmines buried under the ground, the plant will change its is the color we use for danger and stop. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. You know, one that really does come in useful and it doesn't really have a lot of um, defects, clearly. And it comes in handy of saving lives without ruining its own. So that's good. And number three is the Enviro pig. This is a genetically modified pig that's been created for making the environment a little less polluted and safe to live in. The pig genetically modified produces 65% less phosphorus in its feces. So phosphorus, I think, I think when it's like heated up, like by the sun, um, it, release, it releases gas and then you know, it damages the ozone layer and um, pollutes the air. But I could be wrong. I don't know. But number nine, number number two, number two, number two, number three, number number two, number two, number two, number number two is the fuel excreting genetically modified bugs. A research at Silicon Valley boasts at Silicon Valley. Boasts of creating a genetically modified bug which eats our agricultural waste and excretes diesel fuel. Now, I was in a bit of a rush when I read, when I wrote this, so it's not exactly properly grammared, and there's a lot of S's. Yeah, that's number, number, number two. And number one, number one on the list is transgender people. <laughs> I'm lying, of course. They're not. 
But number one is, of course, it's transgender people. I mean, um, scientists now can change the gender of a person just by implanting different um, proteins and different, um, I'll put my phone down for this one, and different stuff into um, another, that person. And um, that's pretty remarkable. It, it is remar a remarkable thing. And um, yeah, it's it just is. And I know the title was a bit misleading, but this is this is an actually a top ten scary animals created by science. Otherwise, I would have made it a little bit more scary. But um, yeah, it's just a remarkable thing that you ca that you can actually do this now. And um, yeah, it's just helped so many people be comfortable in their own skin. And I think as long as as long as you are, then that's all that really matters, you know. Um, so good on them. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, ending on a bit of a wholesome note, I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, I don't know what we're going to be doing. I'll probably do my workout routine. Maybe not. Maybe so. This is why I'm in the gym, because in the gym, I got my workout equipment. As you can see, I got my weights. I would show you my dumbbell, but I don't want to. So, yeah, I don't want to pick it up. <laughs> so I want to go do my workout, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace out.